teacher friends. Welcome, welcome to my free webinar all about cross-curricular fun for October. I am so excited to be here with y'all today. So my name is Kara Wickman and I am the founder of Create Your Balance with Literacy. And I am a 23-year veteran teacher turned coach, mentor, and trainer. And I love helping teachers like you learning how to teach cross-curricular. So that is my passion other than teaching first grade. So welcome, welcome. I cannot wait to share all my tips and tricks with you today about all my activities for October. And I would love to help you guys out with anything that you need. So during the webinar, if you have any questions, please ask. I will be, be looking at my comments on my phone. And um, one thing I do need to tell you though, that uh, my Wi-Fi might be a little slow. So my face might freeze. Um, and so, but my voice will keep going. So don't freak out, it's okay. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up in the comments if you can hear me. And that would be awesome. Welcome Whitney, welcome Claudine, welcome Diane. Oh my gosh, gosh, welcome. Welcome Michelle. Thank you so much for uh, everything that you um, are doing with um, our Facebook group. Oh, thanks, thanks for giving me a thumbs up. Like I said, my, my Wi-Fi is kind of choppy a little bit, but um, hopefully you guys can still hear me. Hi, Vanessa. Yay, Marilyn, thank you so much. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and get started real quick. And because um, I, I have a lot of information I wanna tell you today about October. October is probably my favorite of all the months to teach, as you can probably tell. So um, just to introduce you got to me to you, because I know we have a lot of new members in our group. Um, that are joining us today for the first time. Um, so I have been teaching my 24th year this year, first grade. I've taught uh, GT and ESL, and I've taught five years in third grade and 18 years in first grade. I have been the team leader for 12 years on my team. I have been a mentor, a coach, and a trainer in my school district. I teach in Bernie, Texas, which is a rural district um, uh, north of San Antonio in the Texas Hill Country. I have taught my fellow colleagues writer's workshop, reader's workshop, guided reading, math workshop, behavior management. I am now CPE certified. So at the end of this webinar, if you would like some course hours for, P for prof professional development, I will give you a certificate for two hours. I think this webinar is probably going to be about two hours, so you might want to find a comfy place to sit and... Um, you know, enjoy a, a, a good beverage while you're listening. Um, and then I ha am a Seesaw Ambassador. So um, I have also given trainings about learning how to do Seesaw in my district. And I was Teacher of the Year in 2009. These are pictures of my family and me giving trainings in my district. Um, I've had the privilege of teaching both of my daughters, Kennedy and Presley, in my first grade class. And so I know that a lot of these things that I've done in my first grade class are well worth it because my daughters today still love reading and they still love writing and they still talk about first grade. So um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I have a TPT store. You're welcome to follow my store. Um, just check it out. And I'm going to upload this into the Facebook group afterwards. And so anything you see that you like, you can click on the link or click on the picture. It'll take you straight there to check it out. So that's pretty cool. Um, so you invite your friends, your teacher friends to come into our Facebook group. That would be awesome. Um, I love having new members in our group. You can follow me on Pinterest, Instagram. I have a YouTube channel. I have a blog and I have a podcast. So you can click on any of these links to get there. I also have an email list. Um, if you want to subscribe to my email list, I have a weekly newsletter that goes out every Sunday morning. Okay. In my newsletter, I give out freebies, dollar deals, a BOGO, buy one, get one free, my podcast episode of the week, my YouTube video of the week, my weekly lesson plans, tip of the week, upcoming webinar information, um, and my blog post. So it's all there, all in one. And you guys can click on the pictures and check them out. Um, and then uh, if you want to subscribe to my email list, I'd love to have you guys there too. Now, I'm having a flash sale. Yesterday I posted in the Facebook group that I'm having a flash sale. I have 20 different dollar deals today, okay? So y'all, click on this picture after the webinar if you wanna upload it. 
Um, I will upload it in the Facebook group and then you can download it and then click on the picture. It'll take you to my flash sale, okay? Now, if you love what I'm sharing today and you want more information, stay tuned to the end because you could have a chance to join my lifetime membership subscription where all of your lesson plans and resources are already made and prepped for you so you can take back your weekends. So if you like what I'm teaching you today, stay till the end. I'm also going to be giving a Q&A, okay, at the end, so you can check that out as well. If you submitted a question in our Facebook group, I'm going to be answering your question, okay? Welcome, Bren. Thank you so much for joining me. So exciting news, guys. I will be giving a free webinar series in October called from scribbles to stories, how to launch writer's workshop like a rock star. So mark your calendars, October 8th, October 15th, October 22nd at two o'clock, two o'clock Central Standard Time. Each webinar will be one hour that you could earn your PD credit. Remember, I'm CPE certified. Okay, if you show up live to these webinar trainings, it's a boot camp all about how to launch writer's workshop, okay? If you're struggling, with your writing block in your classroom, which I know a lot of teachers always ask questions about how to teach writing. Writing seems to be the big challenge for a lot of teachers because they don't really teach you that in college. Okay, so I'm here to help you. So the first day if you show up live, you're gonna receive the first five days of your lesson plans for free on how to launch Writer's Workshop, the first five days. The second time you show up live, you're gonna receive my writing dictionary, okay? My Writer's Workshop dictionary for free, okay? I will send it to you. The third day you show up live, you're gonna receive my Writer's Workshop mentor text list and vocabulary cards. You could also get a chance to win a 50% off coupon to be used towards my Writer's Workshop course that I'll be launching, okay? So if you guys are interested in that, stay tuned in the Facebook group, okay? I'm gonna be um, uploading those uh, webinars pretty quickly here in the Facebook group and um, you guys can join. So here's what you're gonna learn. Day one for the Writer's Workshop boot, boot camp, you're gonna learn how to launch Writer's Workshop from day one with suggested mentor text, how to teach the I do, the we do, and the you do. I'm gonna share anchor charts and interactive notebooks for the first five days. Okay, you get those for free. Day number two, I'm gonna teach you how your students' writing, or I'm gonna show you how your students' writing will transform from scribbles to stories using my launch method. Okay, using my balanced literacy, I do, we do, you do framework. And then day three, how to manage the workshop so it runs by itself, and getting your students to love writing so they want to write all day long, okay? So many of my students that I've, I've already had in first grade, they still love to write, and so I'm gonna share with you my tips and tricks for that. Okay, so today's training, you're going to um, learn about all of my units that I do for October, okay? I love to teach cross-curricular. I believe if you teach cross-curricular, the kids can make better connections that way, they remember stuff better, and they're just happier kids, okay? So I'm gonna share with you all my different units, and then um, you could win some free resources today if you're commenting. I have four different ones for you guys to choose from. Um, I have a new classroom reveal YouTube video that I'm gonna share with you. I'm not gonna share with it, I'm not gonna show it today, but you can watch it on your own time. I'm gonna share how to organize my mentor text, my unit organization, all the materials and supplies I need for October, my Gail Gibbons author study, spider activities, Charlotte's Web activities, Halloween activities, place value activities, greater than, less than, force, motion, and energy, owls, bats, pumpkins, thematic unit, my classroom newsletter templates, and then a certificate of attendance if you need one for today, okay? So, um, like I said, it's gonna be about two hours long. So message me on uh, Facebook Messenger when we're finished. That's usually the best time, best way to get a hold of me, okay? Okay, here's what you can win today. So these are my four favorite units for October, okay? So I'm giving you my four favorite ones, okay? So from seed to pumpkin, this is a thematic unit all about pumpkins, the life cycle of a pumpkin, and it's got, um, anchor charts, interactive notebooks. It's got a science investigation about how to um, 
observe a pumpkin after you carve it, like if it's rotting and it's getting all moldy, so it's got a science investigation, it's got spookly, um, lots of different um, story companions in it, lots of great things. Over here we have Charlotte's Web. If you are a third grade teacher or higher and you love to teach Charlotte's Web, this might be for you to win, okay? Um, I've got character analysis in here. I've got a Charlotte's Web booklet that you can use for each chapter. I've got anchor charts, interactive notebooks, um, writing craftivities. I love all of those things, okay? So it's all in that unit if you want to do Charlotte's Web. Okay, and then I've got an owl, all about owls thematic unit. It's called Birds of a Feather, okay? I'm going to share with you again all of my lesson plans. There's about 10 or 12 days of lesson plans in this unit, okay? And so it's, they've got anchor charts, interactive notebooks, writing craftivities, um, the life cycle, how owls use force and motion, how they use energy. Um, and so I'm going to share with you at the end how I plan out my owl thematic unit so you understand how I did it, okay? So I'm going to share with you the five easy steps to teach cross-curricular. And then, of course, if you love to write about Halloween, if you're allowed to write about Halloween at your school, then I have all these writing craftivities that you can... Um, you can win if you're commenting. So there's black cat, there's mummies, there's haunted house, there's trick or treat um, persuasive writing, there's pumpkin life cycle writing. Oh my gosh, it's it's got lots of writing activities. So they're super fun. The kids love them, and they all look great outside on your bulletin board in your hallway. If you like to do a holiday bulletin board outside, I know a lot of teachers love to do holiday bulletin boards, and so that's one um, option for you. Okay. So, if you don't win today, you can download this webinar, click on these pictures, and it'll take you to all of these different resources, and you can check them out, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pick my first winner today. Let's see. Oh, you guys are commenting already. That's awesome. Yay, 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 yay. Okay, so I'm going to pick uh, Marilyn Ellis. Yay, Marilyn, you are my first winner. Congratulations, Marilyn. Okay, so after the webinar is over, Marilyn, I'm gonna be messaging you about your free resource. So be thinking about it, okay? Yay! So exciting. Okay, these are some teacher testimonials that of different teachers who have bought my, my resources, who have used them, and have given me great feedback, okay? If you're you, new to my group and you don't know anything about me, you don't know anything about my resources, then um, this might be helpful for you. So Christina says, this makes teaching fun and engaging not only for the teacher but for students. The examples take the stress out of anchor charts and the student work is exactly what my range of learners need. I love and lo I follow and love this TPT seller. Seriously, the best book companions ever. So thank you, Christina. And then Beth says, this is such a fun way to teach this unit. Thank you for all the wonderful materials. And then Donna says, I love this. I can't wait to use this resource with my class as a prerequisite leading up to my formal op observation. It covers so many skills in a fun way. So thank you ladies for those testimonials. Um, the, this is my classroom uh, reveal of my new YouTube of my classroom this year. Okay, so if you wanna click on this picture later on, it'll take you straight to the YouTube video and you can check out my classroom. And I go through all the different parts of my classroom and show you every nook and cranny, okay? <laughs> it's very detailed. Okay, so you kind of have to get your mindset around October, and I know it's not October yet. However, it's not too, too early to ever start planning ahead, okay? If you're like me, I like to plan ahead with all of my units and lesson plans. Um, and my team, we like to plan at least uh, one to two weeks ahead of time. Okay, when we plan, so we have things that um, are already in place so we don't have to stress, okay? So the last thing that we need on our plate is stress. Can I get an amen? Yes, okay? So here's what I do for October, okay? So Gail Gibbons is my number one starting off point. Gail Gibbons has so many fabulous nonfiction stories for October. So she's got bats, she's got owls, she's got pumpkins, spiders, all about Halloween, okay? So I always use her as my author study. Then I go from there and I go to bats. I go to owls. I go to spiders. And then within owls and bats, I use force and motion. And I use types of energy. And I'll share with you how I cross-curricular 
those two types of units, okay? Then I do Halloween, of course, and then Charlotte's Web if I have time, okay? Now, in our school, Charlotte's Web is mostly for the third grade students, but I have taught Charlotte's Web in first grade before, but now it's moved up to third grade. So like I said, if you are a third grade teacher and you love Charlotte's Web, I'm going to share with you what I do for that. Okay, so hello Janice, thank you for watching. Uh, yes, Tamiko, fall is my favorite season. Yes, yes, yes. I love fall and I love October and my house is already decorated for October. I love it. So these are some Gail Gibbons books. You guys, if you already know about all of these books, that's great. If you don't, I highly recommend that you use Gail Gibbons as an author study for October. So here's her bats, her spiders, pumpkin book, Halloween is owls, pumpkins, um, and then Halloween. She's got two different Halloween books. And then this is the author study that I do for her. I have um, her picture. I have her name on my author board. And I have different pictures of some of her books that we read during science time. Okay. So I read owls and bats for sure and spiders during science time when we do force and motion and energy. Um, and then on Halloween, the day of Halloween, which I think is a Tuesday this year, on Halloween, we're going to read her Halloween book. Okay, these are some craftivities that I've done for Gail Gibbons before. Hello, Debbie. Thank you for watching. Um, and so um, you can write about bats. You can write all about owls. You can write their life cycles. You can do spiders. And I love making lap books. If you have never made any lap books before with your kids, they are so fun. Okay, so it's a, just a different pre presentation of how to make a project. Um, so when you do research and you always want to have the kids present something, have them make a lap book, okay? Now there's different kinds of lap books, but I use the colored manila folders, the colored folders that are in the box that are like yellow and red and blue. And I have the kids um, pick a color. They decorate the cover so that if they would do all about spiders, then they would decorate the cover. You could do this for bats, you can do this for owls, you can do this for pumpkins, okay? If you're doing research. Um, and then every single template that you have the kids complete, you staple inside of the lap book. So when you open it up, it's like a book. So the kids can share with each other if they're presenting to the class or they're presenting to the parents or to a buddy. Um, and the lap book is so cute. And then you can hang them up on your bulletin board outside as well. Okay, so they're super fun. And I love making lap books. So just another idea of how to do your um, research. Okay, so then from there, I go on to owls. So these are some of my favorite owl books. <clears throat> I read Owl Moon, absolutely love Owl Moon. Um, the Owls by Gail Gibbons, of course. The Littlest Owl, Owl Babies, Owls. Owly is so cute, and then Lazy Ozzy is so cute, and then Hoo Hoo is very cute, and the Barn Owls. So these are just some of the owl books that I read. And then I have a owl theme center, okay? So if you know me from before, if you have been following me for a couple of years now, you know that I love thematic units and I love to teach cross-curricular. So I have a theme center. <clears throat> and my theme center changes every two to three weeks. And so I flip-flop between science and social studies, okay? I don't teach science and social studies at the same time because I like to spread out my unit so I can deep dive deeper into the skills and the knowledge and the, the teaks that they need. The, the units that I do are typically two to three weeks long. So um, this is the first unit that I do in October about owls. So what I do is I have all these different kinds of posters on my bulletin board that about different types of owls. We learn all the different types. We learn about the food chain. We learn about how energy transfers through the food chain. Um, we learn about how they use their feathers for, for force and motion, how they fly on silent wings, how they use energy, how do they use light, how do they use sound, how do they use um, heat. And then I have all these different puppets down here they can play with. I have different books they can look at. I have the life cycle cards they can put in order. Um, so, so many different things that you can do for owls and then you can cross curricular that with science and reading and writing. So that's super fun. Um, some of the things, projects that I've done for writing before, they've written about the owl life cycle before. So this is the project we do for that. 
And I have compared two different uh, genres of books before. So we read Owly and then we read Owl Moon and we compared fiction to realistic fiction with a Venn diagram. Then we had made an owl and they labeled the parts. And so we talked about nouns also in writing time and we labeled the parts of the owl to label the nouns. And then we made a Venn diagram about fiction and realistic fiction and what they have um, at the together for the same thing. Um, because sometimes it's hard for the kids to know to understand the difference between realistic fiction and fiction. Sometimes it's really tricky for them. And then I love teaching poetry. Every Friday we have focus poem. Okay, and so focus poem is um, oh hi mom, thank you for watching. Um, focus poem is another part of the balanced literacy framework that I use, um, and I was trained how to incorporate poetry within my cross curricular units, and so all of my poetry is uh, connected with science or social studies okay so we have an owl poem and on Fridays we do focus poems so they have to visualize in their head what the poem is about and I tell them poetry can also tell a story the author is has a message that he's trying to say in the poem okay and so they visualize what they're going to illustrate we make a mental image in our head which was one of our teaks okay and so then they glue the poem on the left side of the journal on the right side of the journal they make an illustration you can have them highlight different parts of speech in the poem so let's say that i just taught them how to um what nouns are in the previous week on friday we're going to highlight all the nouns that are in the poem or if you want to teach verbs that week they can highlight all the verbs in the poem and so it's a really good way to recycle or do a recursive review of all the different parts of speech that you've learned during writing time for grammar and then create your mental image and visualizing at the same time so i love poetry it also helps with fluency rhyming the rhythms of the poems their songs we can sing so they're super fun um, I have a big um, resource that has all the poems for fall and all the poems for spring. So if you're interested, click on this picture later on to check it out, okay? So these are some interactive notebooks. I do interactive notebooks every single day, okay? I have a schema notebook, which is my reader's comp uh, reading comprehension. I have science and social studies, which are together. Then I have math, and then I have focus poem. Okay, so I have four different journals um, and I try to use my schema notebook every day and I try to use my science and social studies every day and then of course math is every day and then my focus poem is on Friday. Okay, so this is what I do for owls and um, for force and motion and energy. So we do this template that says illustrate how owls use the forms of energy and then write a sentence about it. So they have to illustrate how does the owl use heat? How does the owl use light? How does the owl use sound? So after I teach the forms of energy, then we go beyond that about what how we use the energy and we go beyond that to see how the owls are gonna use energy. Same thing with force and motion. After I teach force and motion, we talk about the differences and then they're gonna illustrate how does an owl move? How does he move zigzag? How does he move up and down? How does he move side to side? How does he use push and pull? How does he use fast and slow? Um, and so these are the interactive notebooks that we do for science. So you can read a lot of different stories. There are a lot of different books lend themselves to talk about energy, talking about force and motion, how they fly, how they use their wings on silent flight. Um, and then you can easily, very easily tie it together um, cross curricular. So that's super fun. So this is in my owl unit, birds of a feather. If you win one of the resources today, you could uh, win the birds of a feather um, owl unit and that's in there too. We've also done an owl home project before, and the kids create an owl of their favorite kind. They bring it to school, and then we display them out in the hallway. And they also do a report, a research report about their favorite owl. So if they want to make a snowy owl, um, they have to make it 3D, so it stands about this big, about this tall. Um, and some have been smaller, and some have been bigger, but then um, they can do the research report at home and then they bring it to school and then they share it with the class. So it's super fun. Um, so Tamika, interactive notebooks, let me go back real quick. Interactive notebooks, I use the composition journals. And so I have four different ones. And so um, it's just another way for me to judge and to grade how they are learning the skill, okay? 
So whether it's poetry or reading or um, grammar, whatever the, the skill is, they complete the template and they glue it in their notebook, okay? So it's kind of, it's a compilation of all the different skills for the whole year. So by the end of the year, their science notebook is going to be super full. By the end of the year, their reading comprehension schema notebook is going to be super full. The math notebook is going to be super full. I mean, it is so jam-packed full of things that they, all the skills they've learned. So every skill that I teach them, I always try to do an activity that goes in their interactive notebook. So a lot of teachers do it different ways. Um, whatever the template is, I shrink it down to about 85%. So it fits into the composition notebook. I use composition notebooks because they don't fall apart as easily as the spirals. Uh, the spirals, they just, pfft, they just fall apart. The pages just come out. They just, I don't like them. <laughs> I like the composition book. It's a lot better made and it holds up a lot better throughout the year. So I hope that answers your question, but that's a great question. Um, mentor text for spiders. So if you want to do spiders, again, you can real, read Gail Gibbons. Gail Gibbons has a spider book. And then all of these different spider books are so great. Like um, The Magic School Bus, Spins a Web, of course, Charlotte's Web, Are You a Spider, Diary of a Spider. Um, and then Eric Carl has The Very Busy Spider. So again, you can compare different genres of stories. You can compare fiction, nonfiction, realistic fiction, or whatever you want to compare. Great topics for spiders and great way to compare different um, genres. Also, you can do a research lap book. Like I was saying, if you wanna do a lap book, um, you can do lap books for anything. I mean, you can do lap books for text to world connection. You can do lap books for author's purpose. If you wanna make a comp compilation of whatever unit you are teaching, make a lap book. I mean, that's just another way to present your ideas. Um, and then they can write spider facts so they can write the life cycle of a spider. Um, so whatever you want to do for that is perfect. Here's um, a sequencing foldable for Charlotte's Web. Now, if you still want to read Charlotte's Web to your class as a read aloud, go ahead and do it. Go ahead. It doesn't hurt the kids to, to listen to the story again in a different grade. Here's why. Because when they're older, they're going to remember some things about that book, but there's a lot of things they won't remember, okay? Especially if they skip grades, like if you read it in first grade and then they don't read it again until third grade. There's vocabulary that they're not going to understand in first grade, but they will understand in third grade, okay? So you can still do fun activities with Charlotte's Web, but make them simpler, okay? You don't have to do a big old booklet full of vocabulary words because that they can do that in third grade. But in first grade, you can make it simple. So you can do a sequencing foldable, okay? You, the, what they're gonna do is do first, then next, last. And so what you do is you take a big piece of construction paper, you fold it hot dog style, and then you're gonna cut four slits in the front, okay? And then they can put first, then next, and last. Now you can pick out different chapters for them to glue inside of the foldable. They can color the pictures, they can write the sentences that go above the pictures, or I have the sentences already there for them if they want to just glue them in and put them in order, okay? And then they can share, and then the, these can go on your bulletin board also outside. Um, here is are, here are some more things you can do. You can do a character walk of different characters. Character walks are really tricky for first grade, so I would do them for second grade or third grade. So you're going to do a character analysis. So you're going to talk about... Um, what did Wilbur hear? What did Wilbur speak? What did he say? What did he, where did he walk? What, what did he see? What did he think? What did he hear? Um, how did he feel? So all of these different um, speech bubbles you see around him, then you can do a character analysis. And so I have in, the, in this resource, I have Avery and Fern and Mr. Zuckerman and Wilbur and Charlotte and all these different characters that you can do a character analysis they can pick their favorite character to do a character analysis. They're super fun. Okay, so another idea for you to do, these are some of the character cards that they can choose from to do their character analysis. And then this is a cute craftivity. If if you were, if I were a pig, what would you do? Okay, or if I were Wilbur, what would I do? So they can make a craftivity with the face at the top. Um, I do a lot of writing craftivities a lot during the year. Um, and they're super fun and easy, okay? Let's see, Esther, you said, do you use the notebook the entire year for all the subjects that require gluing and answering questions? Yes, I do. 
Um, I don't do worksheets a whole, whole bunch. Um, I do worksheets for math because we have to use Eureka Math. And so I know Eureka Math has a lot of worksheets. Okay, so that's that's a given. But for science, social studies, and reading comprehension, I always try to do the, the interactive notebook. So that's a great question. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pick another winner um, really, really quick. So how about, let's see, Michelle Pena Handley. Congratulations, Michelle. Okay, Michelle Pena Handley. So you can decide which um, resource you would like, sweetie. Great job. I'm so glad you're commenting. That is so awesome. Okay, so far my winners are Marilyn and Michelle. Okay, so you guys just be thinking about what you like. Okay, mentor text for pumpkins. Again, Gail Gibbons, of course, yes. Um, Gail Gibbons is fabulous, I love her. Um, so you can read Too Many Pumpkins is so cute. I love this book, Too Many Pumpkins. How many seeds in a pumpkin, super cute. From seed to pumpkin, Pumpkin Jack. You can do a science investigation after you carve your pumpkin and watch it um, be moldy and observe it. Pumpkin Jack is a perfect story for that. Um, Let's see, how big could your pumpkin grow? It's pumpkin time, life cycle of a pumpkin. Again, you can compare fiction to realistic fiction to nonfiction, okay? Great, great different um, genres that you can compare. And then if you want them to write the life cycle of a pumpkin, you can even have them plant pumpkin seeds if you want to. I know other, other teachers have done that before. And then have them write first, then next, and last. For the life cycle of a pumpkin, they can put the life cycle in order like this. You can also read Spookly. Everybody loves Spookly. <laughs> and then they're gonna write about Spookly the Square Pumpkin. They can write first, then next, and last. And then they can write about a spooky pumpkin. If they wanna write a spooky story during Halloween time, This, um, these projects are all in the Spookly, the Spookly resource and in the resource from Seed to Pumpkin, okay? So you're welcome to check those out. This is something new that I came up with last year for Spookly. And I thought, you know, what else can I do to show a really cute representation of Spookly? So I decided to have the kids write beginning, middle, and end. So they had this template in the Spookly resource, okay? So they write, a, they draw a picture, then they write a sentence for each picture, okay? By this time of the year, they should be writing five or more words per sentence. They should be doing couples and periods, okay? So I teach my kids how to count on their fingers the, the sentence first. They can draw the lines for the words if they want to, or they can just keep them in their head. And then I decided, well, what, what if we make like a little lap book, but it opens from the front instead of on the side? So I took some orange construction paper, or you could use cardstock too, and then you just fold it in the front so the front comes together. And then you're going to uh, glue the template inside of the pumpkin. So then you can just open the front of his face and then you can see the story, okay? But you can do that for anything. I mean, anything is great. And then they decorated the, the front of Spookly so they put his little lines, they put his eyes, they put his mouth. Um, and so we talked about symmetry, how they have to have it the same on both sides. And then they make the stem and the leaf and they turned out so cute. So I'm definitely gonna be doing this again this year. I love these Spookly pumpkins. And so if you're interested in the Spookly resource, it's a dollar in my flash sale, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so you can check it out. Um, another thing that we do for October is we do a pumpkin patch home project. So my whole team, we get together and we plan out what we're gonna do for pumpkin patch. Now we don't really go to a pumpkin patch, we create the pumpkin patch at school, okay? The kids are going to do a book report at home about their favorite story. It can be any story, it can be Halloween, it can be fairy tale, it can be historical fiction, whatever their favorite story is. And they're gonna create a pumpkin for their favorite character. They're gonna bring the pumpkin and the book to school. And then we display them in the hallway. So we display all the pumpkins and all the books. They dress up as their favorite character. And then we have a character parade. So they get to dress up, they get to carry their pumpkin. If the pumpkin's not too big, they can carry it with them 
um, around the school. So we have a character parade and everybody lines up in the hallway to watch our character parade. It is super cute. So fun. And we take lots of great pictures and um, the kids love this. And the parents love it too. So I send all my pictures. If I take pictures of my class, I always use Seesaw and I upload the pictures on Seesaw so the parents can see. And they love this. And so it goes well with our Halloween day and it goes well with our Fall Fest. So we have a Fall Fest on um, the Thursday before Halloween. The whole campus gets to dress up as their favorite character. So we just tie this in to the same day. Um, I, I believe it's Red Ri Ribbon Week also, so they can dress up. So it is super fun and the kids love it. So that actually, this resource is a freebie in my store. So if you go in my store, look on the right, the left side, it says custom categories for the free resources and then you can find the October Home Project and the book report is also in there too. All right, so moving on to bats. Um, again, Gail Gibbons has a bat book. You can read Stella Luna, love Stella Luna, bats around the clock, bats on parade, bat jamboree. So if you know me from past experiences, past webinars, you know that I like to teach cross-curricular like I said. So during math time, I'm gonna pull in, you better believe I'm gonna pull in some bat books during math. I'm gonna pull in some owl books during math time. I'm gonna pull in some pumpkin books during math time. I'm gonna try to make it fun, try to make it engaging, okay? So you can use these bat books during math time. So what I have my kids do is I, they bring their whiteboard to the carpet and I tell them, you're gonna listen to the story and you're gonna make an inference, okay? We're gonna use reading skills for math. Okay, you're gonna decide why is the story about math. So we touch our schema and we say, why is the story about math, okay? And then they have to listen to the story and then they're gonna draw, illustrate, write, whatever they wanna do, their ideas that come to mind about why the story is about math. Okay, so if we're talking about um, addition, subtraction, and the book is about addition, they can write number bonds. They can write a, an expression, a, a number sentence, an equation. Um, they can number the, the numbers from zero to 20, whatever the book has, or count, do a countdown, whatever the book has, and then they're gonna think about are the numbers increasing or decreasing in the story, okay? So they have to be thinking a lot, and it really gets them to think outside the box because it's not, it's not easy to try to make an inference. Sometimes these books don't have numbers in them. So they have to kind of create their own way of thinking for math for the story. So it's really interesting. And then they share with their partner. We do a turn and tell. And so they tell their, their partner what they drew on their whiteboard. It's super fun. And it's interesting to see like your higher kids. It's interesting to see what they draw. And then they share with the lower kids and the lower kids can get some ideas for next time because they may not be able to generate those ideas right away so they can practice, okay? Um, another thing you can do is read Zipping, Zapping, Zooming, Bats. Again, you can you can bring in force and motion and energy. How do the bats uh, fly, use their wings? They, they use force and motion. They fly zigzag, they fly up and down, they go side to side, and then they're going, they can make a puppet, they can make a Stella Luna puppet, and then they can show how she flaps different ways using different force and motion. Um, so again, you can compare different genres of books, which is super fun. Stella Luna, compare Stella Luna to the Gail Gibbons' Bat Book, okay? Compare the genres. Um, here's a lap book that I've made with Stella Luna, and uh, Stella Luna is also one of my dollar deals today. Um, and so on, on the cover of the lap book, I made Stella Luna here, and I used the toothpicks for to make her little fingers and her thumb on the wings. So I gave the kids a moon, they had to cut out a moon. They had to cut out the bat and put a bat on top with the googly eyes. I love to use googly eyes. It makes them uh, look so so real, much more, more real. And then they had to label the ears, the thumb, the fingers, the feet, the wings, okay? Put the title at the top. So you open the lap book and inside, this is what we did. We, um, we glued the different sequence of events. So I had some sentence strips on my pocket chart full of sentences, these same exact sentences I had on my pocket chart. And then as a class, we put the sentences in order from beginning to end. And then they knew exactly what the order was and so they could do their own in their own lap book, okay? 
Um, and so then we talked about the character, the feelings, the problem and solution. You could do story elements. And then they had to write about how did she feel? How did her feelings change? What was her problem? How was it solved? Excuse me. Or they could do, you could do a acrostic poem with Stella Luna like this. And then they could write different words that describe Stella Luna from the book. That is super cute as well. So all of this is in my store. Okay, it's a dollar. And then they could also write about a scary bat if you want to do um, a bat research project. Okay, and then moving on to Halloween. So um, again, Gail Gibbons has a Halloween book. Um, you could read Room on the Broom. Absolutely love Room on the Broom. I've got a great story companion I'm going to share with you about that. You can read It's Halloween by Jack Proletsky. I love using this book on Halloween. So to set the stage here, I have, I get a pumpkin, I get a big pumpkin, and I uh, have the kids come up one by one and they scoop out the seeds, okay? They keep the seeds at their desk and I give them a little envelope that has a pumpkin on it and they, they make an envelope and they put the seeds in there. We staple the seeds in there. They take home the seeds to plant if they want to, okay? A lot of these kids have never had their hand inside of a pumpkin. You would think that they would, but they have not, okay? And so this is a great experience for them to grab the seeds out. Oh my gosh, there's their facial expressions is amazing. Um, and then I carve the pumpkin. We vote on a different kind of face. So we have, I have three different faces we choose. They make a vote, <clears throat> and then um, I put a candle in it and light it up, and then I turn off all the lights, and then we read. We listen to um, It's Halloween by Chuck Prolesky. That is so fun. I love it, and they're, they're just so absorbed and just so excited and so amused by that book. It is just amazing. So lots of great songs and poems in there. Okay, you can read Big Pumpkin. You can read The Little Old Lady Who Was Not Afraid of Anything. You can read Spookily. Pete the Cat, Scary Scary Halloween, and the Itsy Bitsy Pumpkin is perfect. Um, so I have a persuasive story that the kids can write if you're a second grade or third grade teacher and you want to have them write a persuasive story about wanting to go trick-or-treating, okay? So this, the all these craftivities are in that resource, Let's Write for Halloween, which is also a dollar deal. Um, and so they can write why they want to go trick-or-treating. They're going to try to persuade mom and dad why they want to go trick-or-treating or why they should go trick-or-treating. Um, and then while they're, um, you could read Harriet's, um, Harriet's Halloween Candy, which is a really cute book about a little dog who saves her candy and that she eats too much and she gets sick. Um, and so they could, after you read that story, then they can write about why they should go trick-or-treating or why they shouldn't. Um, you can write a story about candy corn. Or you can write about Where's My Mummy, which is a re really cute book, My Black Cat, My Haunted House, My Scary Ghost. Um, and I am going to be making a new project in a couple of days here called um, My Haunted House for Sale. And so it's going to be a persuasive story about persuading someone to buy their haunted house. And it's going to be so fun for persuasive writing. I can't wait to do it. So I'm going to share with you guys what that looks like later. So stay tuned for that one. Okay, and then here's Room on the Broom. They can write first, then next, and last here. And then I love these sequencing foldables. They're so easy and they're so fun and they look so nice after they're finished. Um, and so you can hang these up in your hallway. This one at the bottom, the green one, this is for the little old lady who swallowed a bat. Those old lady books are so good for sequencing, okay? You can also use them for math as well because the numbers increase and increase that she swallows, and then at the end, they decrease. And so you can also use those books for math, okay? Um, room on the Broom, you can do first, then next, and last, and then they're gonna um, illustrate the pictures to put inside of the foldable. Remember to fold them hot dog style so they have enough room for the pictures, and they are super cute, okay? Let's see, Esther, my daughter's class did the persuasive trick-or-treat last year in third grade, and it was so fun to read. Oh, good. That's awesome. Um, and first year in first grade, so I love all the books and ideas. Oh, good, Terry. I'm so glad that you love all these books and ideas. Great, great, great. That makes me happy. Okay, so you know how I love to incorporate all of the read-alouds in math, okay? So these are some really fun math books for Halloween, okay? So take a screenshot of this, or like I said, you can download this later. So you have all of these slides, but 
Um, 10 Timid Ghost is super fun. I love this book. Now, what's also really fun too is that when you read a math book, you can even have the kids act them out, okay? So for example, if you wanna read a math book at your teacher table, you could read 10 Timid Ghosts, okay? You can give them ghost counters, ghost erasers. Um, I mean, they don't have to be ghosts, but they, you can give them some ghosts and then you can give them a 10 frame, okay? When you're reading the story, have them take away a ghost each time that the book says that a ghost runs away or flies away, okay? Super fun, super interactive, super engaging, okay? The kids have to listen and they're acting out the story using their counters, okay? You can use that for anything. You can use it for 10 little pumpkins, seven orange pumpkins, five little pumpkins, 16 runaway pumpkins. I mean, the possibilities are endless, okay? So use some interactive activities for your read alouds, okay, at your teacher table. Or you could have them sit on the carpet with their 10 frame and their counters. And while you're reading the story, they can act it out using their counters, okay? So super fun um, that you can do. So 10 little jack-o'-lanterns, 10 trick-or-treaters. Um, you can even use candy. I mean, for the 10 trick-or-treaters, you could even use candy and have them take away the candy each time that the numbers decrease, okay? So really, really fun for kindergarten and first grade. And then what you can also do is you can have, um, you know, those little black cauldron pumpkins. You can get the little plastic pumpkins or you can get the black cauldron uh, containers. Put some candy corn inside of those, okay? Or you can use the, what's it called? The autumn mix where it has the Indian corn, the candy corn, and the pumpkins. So you have three different ones. Put them in the little um, container, okay? Give them the pumpkin. They're gonna sort and they're gonna put all the candy corn together, all the Indian corn together, all the pumpkins together. That is their witch's brew, okay? You give them a mat, and then they're going to write addition problems using their counters, using their candy, okay? So you can see down here, um, this is actually Kennedy, my little daughter, when she was in first grade. She, you see how she uh, sorted her little candies right here at the bottom? And then she's writing three different add-ins to equal 10 or 11 or 12 or whatever number you want them to make. They are practicing writing their addition sentences with their candy, okay? And of course, then they can take it home and they can eat it or you can have them eat it there, whatever you want them to do, <laughs> whatever you want them to do. But um, this Witch's Brew is also a dollar in my flash sale, okay? Um, so it's an interactive notebook. You can have them glue into their notebook and then they color it. So... Um, it's really, really fun. And I believe there is a, there's a story called Big Pumpkin that you can read about a witch. Um, or you could read Ten Timid Ghosts with the witch. I mean, there's lots of different witch stories. Or Room on the Broom. And then give them the, um, the cauldron or the pumpkin to count their witch's brew. Okay? Another game you could do is... Um, oh, and by the way, here is a witch's brew ten frame. So if you want to use this ten frame for them to act out the story... There's one right there. <laughs> um, and another thing you could do is play bump. Um, you can use the uh, snap cubes. So get some green and orange snap cubes, okay? One person gets 10 of the same color. So one kid has 10 orange, the other kid has 10 green. Or you can use black, whatever Halloween colors you want, okay? You roll the dice, you get a double dice, okay? You add the two numbers together. Whatever the sum is, they land and they put their snap cube on top of that number on the bump card, okay? If they land the same number again, they're gonna put a second cube on top and they're gonna stack it. That means they're safe. Their partner cannot bump them off. However, if their partner rolls that same number again, their partner can bump off their snap cube and their partner gets to put their cube on the number. They get their partner's cube, so they bump them off, okay? The free space is for 11 and 12. So if they roll a five and a six or a six and a six, they can land on the free space. So whoever uses all of their cubes first wins the game. They love this game. And I have it for every month and holiday, y'all. Okay, it is super fun and super easy to teach. Teach it at your teacher table and then you can put it in your math tubs, okay? So you can have that them do that one. 
or you can have them make story problems with their counters. So you remember how I was talking about those ghost counters? Okay, so here's, I have some ghost erasers right here. And um, you can look on Amazon and to get your holiday erasers, okay? Sometimes Target has these, sometimes, but not all the time, okay? So look on Amazon and get you some holiday counters. So you can have them create the story problem using their ghosts. Here's the haunted house. You could use it with that story, the 10 timid ghost, okay? And then have them write the number sentence. Another thing you can do is have them uh, give them some spider counters, give them spiders. They can also make addition questions, problems, subtraction problems with spiders, okay? This is in my spider resource. That's also a dollar deal. And then here's a haunted house that you can have them to use. Here's a pumpkin they can use. Um, you can even have them use candy corn. Um, I have candy corn right here at the bottom. They can use candy corn to add, to subtract, okay? And then they can eat it, okay? Um, if you're allowed to have them eat it. This this mat right here has three add-ins. This one has two. So I have both, okay? Click on the pictures and it'll take you to the resource there, okay? Okay. Um, yes, Michelle, I have recording sheets for all of these. Like, if you're interested, I have a whole bundle full of these recording sheets for every month and holiday. So from August to May, okay? So I've got addition, two add-ins and three add-ins, and then I have subtraction for all of them also, okay? And for each month, I have about three or four different ones. And I have um, story problem cards that go with them, okay? So you could read the story problem on the card and then they can write it, they can act it out, okay? So like I, like I said, click on the picture, <laughs> it'll take you to the resource, okay? Um, they're super fun, I love them. Um, this is what you could do for place value. If you're starting place value anytime soon, um, I have these uh, anchor charts and interactive notebooks in a resource. It's called Let's Get Interactive Anchor Charts for Math. And I have them for math, science, social studies, reading and writing and word families, okay? So if you're interested, this is the uh, math units uh, mat that I use for hundreds, tens, and ones. Um, we practice with the counters that we have for the place value counters. And then we talk about um, way, different ways that we can make numbers. And then they have to write the number here on the suitcase. And then they glue the numbers um, next to the suitcase in their interactive notebook, okay? Now let me tell you about interactive notebooks. If you haven't done them yet, okay? When you start doing them, make sure that you give them something that is a square to cut out and not little pieces, okay? That is super important. Don't assume that your kids can cut out these small little pieces right away. Now, my kids right now, let's see, we're we're on day thir about day 30, when, uh, tomorrow's day 30. So they're able to cut out smaller pieces now, but at the beginning of the year, I only had them cut out circles or rectangles or squares, okay? That is super important to remember because if you don't start off with big pieces, you're gonna get frustrated with them because they're not gonna be able to do it fast enough. They're not gonna be able to do it like you want them to, so you have to start, and you know how you always say start small? This time, start big. Have them do a big picture first and then go smaller and smaller and smaller as the year goes on, okay? Just something that I've learned from experience before because not all your kiddos are gonna cut the right way. They're not gonna be able to have that, so just FYI, okay? Okay, here's another one for greater than, less than, comparing two numbers. Um, I have this anchor chart that you can show them what is greater than, what is less than, and they have these different uh, vocabulary words they have to learn. So for greater than, bigger, larger, greater, huge, more, increase, decrease. Those increase and decrease words, I use them every single day whenever I read a math story to them, every single day. Then they're gonna do these interactive notebooks. You could have them uh, cut out these small numbers and glue them on either side. You could have them roll a dice and then have them compare two numbers using dice with the um, Ali Alligator Math that I have on here. So those are just some ideas for math if you wanna do those for math, okay? All right, so we're moving on to force, motion, and energy, okay? I told you this was gonna be a long one, right? I hope you guys are sitting in a comfy place. <laughs> okay, so I love reading The Runaway Pumpkin. 
The runaway pumpkin is so cute. You can do a science investigation experiment with a pumpkin and roll it across the floor and you have another ball, like a regular, uh, like a tennis ball or um, a volleyball. And you compare and see how they're going to roll across the floor, which one's gonna stay in a straight line, which one's gonna curve, okay? Okay, so you can do an experiment when you read this book, The Runaway Pumpkin. Um, if you go to um, the first grade wow, first grade wow, this teacher has a great blog full of free resources. And I got this um, idea from her. So go to first grade wow, write that down. And she has a lot of free resources for you guys, okay? Um, you can also read Motion, Light, Energy. These three books right here are so cute and they're short and sweet. I like to read short and sweet books because let's face it, we don't always have time to read a whole book. Now, if you're pressed for time and you really, really, really wanna read a certain book, just read half of the book the first day, half the book the second day, or spread it out into three days, okay? So sound is all around us, light is all around us, energy is really good, forces make things happen. And this one is super cute, and everyone shouted pull, a first look at forces and motion, okay? So what, what, what I did was, um, what I've done in the past is have the kids sort a basket for energy, okay? So they sorted a flashlight, they sorted a glove, um, they sorted different things that are different kinds of energy, and then they had to draw those objects into their template, and then they could glue it in their science notebook, okay? So in the basket, I had all these different objects, and then they had to sort heat and light and sound, put them in the right little um, container, and then they had to draw them. So this is super easy, super fun for them to understand light, um, heat and energy, light, sound, and um, heat energy. You could even do this as an um, introduction to the lesson and have them uh, sort them without even teaching them what they are first. I know some teachers like to do an investigation experiment right away in the beginning to kind of hook them in. So you could do that, or you could save this for at the end when they already know all the different categories, okay? Um, these are some anchor charts that I use for forms of energy. These are in my Let's Get Interactive Science Notebooks interactive, interactive anchor charts. Um, click on the picture if you, if you wanna check them out. So they get post-it notes, and so I pre-make all my um, anchor charts using the title, the border, the pictures, but then the meat of it is used with the kids with post-it notes, okay? So I had the kids draw pictures. Now I drew these pictures to give you an idea, but you can have the kids draw what they think uh, a certain energy is. Have them draw heat, have them draw sound, have them draw light, and then they come up and they sort them on your anchor chart. Then you can give them this interactive notebook. They can color these pictures. They can glue them, cut them out and glue them on the right column for the sound, heat, and light energy. Same with force and motion. Have them draw pictures of different things that have force, different things that have motion. Have them post it on the anchor chart then they color the pictures and then they sort them into their science notebook. Okay, this is one of my favorite things to do for sound energy, okay? Now, you can integrate this with writing as well. So when you talk about onomatopoeias, you can read The Listening Walk. I love this book, this is amazing. Okay, so the little girl goes on a walk and she hears all these different sounds and she makes the sounds like swish, swash, swish, swash, swish, swash, quack, 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 chirp, 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 chirp. She hears all these different sounds, okay? So you read the story and then you tell the kids, we're learning about onomatopoeias, okay? And then you're gonna have them go on their own listening walk around the school, okay? You give them a template, it says my listening walk, what did I hear? And you're gonna have them draw all the different sounds that they hear, heard on their listening walk, okay? Now here's the best part. After they draw the pictures, let's say if they draw a car, when they get back to the room, they have to write an onomatopoeia to go with it, okay? So if they draw a car, they can write a uh, zoom zoom or whatever word they, they wanna write that goes with their picture. So fun and it's so easy to integrate the science and the writing together, okay? 
So um, this template, you can click on the picture. It's, it's a freebie in my Google Drive. You can click on the picture and then you can get this freebie and then let your kids go on a listening walk for sound energy. It's so fun, okay? All right, another thing you can do for heat, for thermal energy, you can make s'mores. We just made s'mores last Friday. My kids love this. Oh my gosh. They will remember this day for the rest of their life. No joke. They will, okay? So um, what you can do is have, you can read one, two, three, make a s'more with me, okay? After you've taught them about light energy, heat energy, thermal energy, then you have them make a s'more, okay? You can have them make a solar oven, but you do not have to make the oven with the box. All you have to do is, after you make the s'more, have them wrap it in tin foil, put it in a baggie, okay? Write their name on it with a Sharpie and then um, set them outside in the sun. But you need to set them on something black, okay? I have a black science cart, so I put all of my um, s'mores on the top of my black science cart. The black will absorb the heat more and then the melt, it'll melt the chocolate a lot more, okay? If you don't have something black to set it on, you might wanna get some black construction paper to put them on or a black pan or a black surface, something black, okay? That's a little trick that I learned. And then we set them out about lunchtime, okay? At the very end of the day, um, about 2.20, 2.30, we went outside and then they got to open up their s'more and they got to see that the chocolate had melted. Now the marshmallows, they don't melt all the way, but they do get really soft, okay? So then we sat there under the canopy and then we ate our s'mores. It was so fun and then we talked about how did, why did the s'more melt? What caused it to melt? Was it light, heat, sound? What kind of energy was it? Um, and then we, we do this template and so it says, what is my hypothesis, what will happen? They draw what they think the s'more will look like after it's heated. And some of these kids have never ever made s'mores before. They've never gone camping, they've never had a s'more. This is their first experience, they are super excited. Um, and then they're going to draw, what does your s'more look like at the beginning? What does it look like at the end? Okay. And so was my prediction correct? Yes or no. So you shrink this down to about 85% and then they glue it into their science notebook. Love this activity. It's perfect for thermal and heat energy and light energy. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Another light energy you can do is they can make a rainbow with a flashlight and a prism. So you can read how do you make a rainbow for light. And then you can talk about how um, the light bends with the prism and then it forms all the different colors of the rainbow. Um, and so then you can have them uh, hold the prism up and then shine the flashlight on the prism so it shines on the ceiling and then they can make a rainbow on the ceiling, okay? Um, and then they can color the rainbow on their template what three things make a rainbow? Well, you need the sun, you need your eyes, okay, and you need the rain, okay, those things. Um, so those three things make a rainbow, and then that's another thing you can do for light, okay? So if you are wondering, Kara, how do you organize all of these units? <laughs> that's a lot, I know. So I use binders, I use binders, and so I have these cover pages in my store. These are dollar deals today, it's a dollar deal. Um, and so I make binders for every unit. I have a cover page on the front. <clears throat> Inside of the binder, I have it organized by subject. So I have reading, writing, poetry, math, science, and art, or social studies, okay? Depending on the unit. So I organize all my templates in the binder my masters always stay in the binder. Um, and so I just make a point to make sure that I always put my masters back in the binder um, within a couple of days after I make my copies because I don't like my papers to stack up on my desk. I hate that. I cannot stand that. So I try to be organized and I try to put them away as soon as I use them. Um, and so I keep all of these binders in a big uh, cabinet, big wardrobe cabinet that I have. And so I can just pull them out when I need them. And then I also have tubs full of all of my thematic books. I pull out the tub that I need when I plan my unit. And so um, now I've done it so many times now that it's all in my head. But if you're new to a grade level or you're new to teaching and you've never taught this way before, it's good to be organized and it's good to have all of your different masters organized by subject so you know, okay, what am I gonna do for reading? 
What am I going to do for writing? What am I going to do for math? Okay. Or when you're planning with your team, you can take your binder and you can go sit with your team and you can look through and see what you guys have to plan. And then you can take out your masters and then you can make copies for the team. So however you want to plan. Um, and so my team plans once a week and we tend to plan on Tuesdays um, or Wednesdays, depending on the week. And then we all collaborate together. We all talk about the subject at the same time. We all type it into a Google Doc. And so we all have the same uh, Google Doc that's shared with us. And then uh, we can each put our ideas in there. So we're all collaborating. It's not just one person that's planning reading, not one person planning math. We all do it. Um, and we've gotten so good at it. We've gotten a lot faster over the years. So that's how we plan. So. Just some ideas about how to stay organized, and I know it's hard sometimes, right? But um, if you need a newsletter template, this is, these are the newsletters that I use for my parents. And so I have them, I made them for each month and holiday. Um, and so these are in my store as well. And they're also editable, so you can add your name up here at the top, make a make a, t a, a text box right here and then you can write what's what's what are you doing for math what are you doing for social studies for spelling for ela for science for important dates so these are editable and then you can you check those out if you want and then i have a, a resource that is full of mentor texts okay i love using mentor text for all of my subjects so i read a mentor text for reading every day i read a mentor text for writing every day I read a mentor text for math every day. <laughs> I read a mentor text for science every day or social studies. Remember, I flip-flop those. Plus, I read a Magic Treehouse chapter book every day also. So you can imagine, I mean, I'm reading about five, six, seven books a day, okay? I had to have a list made for all of my mentor texts because it drove me crazy which mentor text am I going to read for owls? Which mentor text am I going to read for place value? Okay, so I made this template for my sanity. And so if you're interested in having a list of mentor text, click on this picture here. It's a bundle that has reading, reader's workshop, writer's workshop, math workshop, science, social studies. Um, it also has the grade eight skills. If you teach morning meeting and you teach uh, the grade eight skills like um, responsibility and optimism and goal setting, I've got mentor text for those. And I also have mentor text for word families as well for, for phonics and spelling. So you're, you're, if you're interested, check it out and you can click on the picture. Okay, now a lot of teachers always struggle with this. How do I plan my units cross-curricular, okay? How do I do this? Okay, so I have five easy, five easy steps, okay? If you were here last month and you heard my webinar last month, you already know about this. However, last month I showed you how to plan with apples and properties. This time I'm gonna show you how I do it with owls and bats, okay? So you first, number one, you have to know your standards for science and social studies. You have to know those standards if you teach Common Core or TEKS or wherever, okay? Let your standards for science and social studies drive your thematic unit, okay? It's a whole lot easier to plan using science and social studies skills than trying to plan a thematic unit around math or trying to plan a thematic unit around writing, okay? It's a lot easier to do it with science and social studies, in my opinion, okay? Then number two, you have to see what questions will you ask your students during your unit? What are some vocabulary words they need to know? Vocabulary, academic vocabulary is super important. In our district, we have a really big push for academic vocabulary, okay? So you have to know that. Number three, pick your mentor text for each subject that you that coincide with your theme, okay? Mentor texts are super important, I, I think, okay? Making good connections hearing what how good authors write stories, hearing that academic vocabulary inside of the story is super important. Number four, what is the end goal that you would like your students to know at the end of your unit? So backwards design plan. So if you know what they have to get to, you know, you know the goal, then you can backwards plan from there, okay? So if you have an assessment or you have a performance assessment, you have a benchmark, backwards plan, from there, okay? So you know um, 
what you're going to be doing. Let's see, Michelle, you said, is the picture clickable after the presentation? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Michelle, it's it's clickable. Don't worry. Um, and then number five, decide which purposeful and engaging activities you will have your students complete. Interactive notebooks, anchor charts, booklets, or craftivities. Okay, so for owls and bats, this is what I pulled together, okay? I use, in Texas, we have the Teeks. We have the Teeks resource system that has all the Teeks laid out for us, and it has the scope and sequence, okay? So for owls, I pulled in the skills. I pulled in life cycles, heat, light, sound, energy, food chains, comparing genres, echo location, author's purpose, survival, informational text, force and motion, and research. Okay, those are the skills I pulled in for owls and bats. Okay, so step number one was know your standards for science and social studies. Let your standards drive your thematic unit. Okay, so these are the TEKS, these are my standards that, I, that I'm using. Identify and discuss how different forms of energy, such as light, thermal, sound, are important to everyday life, okay? Demonstrate and record the ways that objects move, such as straight line, zigzag, up and down, back and forth, round and round, fast and slow. Recognize characteristics and structures of informational texts. Develop and follow a research plan with adult assistance, okay? Number two. What questions will you ask your students during the unit? Let your questions drive your lessons. Okay, so questions that I pulled in from the TEKS resource system, okay, are in what ways are different forms of energy important to everyday life? In what ways can we demonstrate the movement of an object? Why is it important to find and use a variety of sources during research? How do I differentiate between useful, relevant information and unhelpful information? With a group, develop a research plan with adult assistance. Review the, the sources provided by your teacher. Determine which sources would be best to address your topic in your research, okay? And then you're gonna think about the academic vocabulary. So in TEKS Resource, they have um, these academic vocabulary, they have a list, okay? So in this unit, they have to know energy, light energy, Loud, soft, sound energy, thermal energy, vibration, force, magnet, magnetic, magnetism, motion, movement, position, pull, push. And then for research, informational text, inquiry, text structure, text print feature. Okay, those are the, the words they have to know. Step number three, decide which mentor text that you will use to coincide with your theme. I already shared all these books with you, right? the Gail Gibbons books, comparing the genres, okay? So these are some mentor texts for owls and bats. I already shared these with y'all, okay? Number four, what do you want your students to know at the end of the unit for science, for force, motion, and energy? This is what they have to know. Participate in a discussion about how light, thermal, and sound energy are used every day, okay? That's, that's what they have to know. De demonstrate how the object can move in a straight line, zigzag, up and down, back and forth, fast and slow, round and round. Draw a picture of the ways your object moved. Describe the movements of the object. Okay, that's easy. That's all owls and bats right there, okay? And then for research, they have to determine a topic with research questions, developing a plan and gathering sources, gathering information and presenting the findings. That's step number four. Step number five, decide which activities you will have the students do. So now you can have them do writing craftivities. You can have them do interactive notebooks, craftivities, student booklets, a group project, experiments, investigations, videos, home projects, exit tickets, okay? Those are things that you can do. Here's some activities that I already shared with you that you can do to get to make sure that your kids understand what you are teaching them. Make a lap book, make a writing craftivity, do focus poem, okay? Step number six, plan out your lessons according to your questions and activities, okay? So I have written one example for each subject for owls, okay? So this is lesson number one. So if you're doing a reader's workshop, you're starting with owls. If you're talking about realistic fiction, you can read Owl Moon. You can talk about beginning, middle, and end. Here's your anchor chart. Your objective is I can retell the story and write the beginning, the middle, and the end. Okay, there's my anchor chart, and there's my interactive notebook. 
that goes in their um, schema notebook. For focus poetry, my objective is I can visualize the poem and create my mental image. Okay, you're gonna read Owly, then here's the poem. They're gonna glue it into their notebook. They're gonna create a mental image and whatever grammar you have taught them, nouns, verbs, adjectives, they're gonna highlight that into the poem. Okay, that's poetry. For writing, writer's workshop, I can write labels to tell about my picture. So you're gonna read Gail Gibbons, Owls. Here's your anchor chart that talks about labels. Teach them how to label their different parts of their animal. And then their interactive notebook, they can make an owl and they can label the different parts of the owl. And then they can, they can look at your example here. Okay, so that, that can be the beginning of their research project that they're doing for writing. For math, you can read Little Owls 1, 2, 3. The objective is I can count sums of 10 on a 10 frame and write an equation. So you're gonna show them an anchor chart of 10 frames, teach them how to start from the top row and then go down to the second row. And then you, they can um, show you different ways to make five on your 10 frames. Show them different ways to make six, eight, and 10, and then write an equation to go with each one. So this is your interactive notebook. See how I put the little owls on there, <laughs> it ties in. And then science, your objective can be, I can discuss and create the life cycle of an owl, okay? Read your uh, book from egg to owl, and then you can have them sort the different parts of the life cycle of the owl, and then have them um, color the picture to go in their science notebook, okay? So those, those are freebies that you can have if you are wanting to sign up on my email list, okay? So if you go to my, um, my email list that I'm gonna post and you can sign up, okay, for these five free lesson plans for owls, okay? I would love to have you do that if you want. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, I understand completely. If I told you that all your lesson plans, mentor text list, anchor charts, interactive notebooks, and writing craft activities were already made, and prep for you. All you had to do was print them out. You could spend more time with your family, more time for your evenings, if for yourself, and the weekends. I understand the overwhelm. And so that's why I am inviting you to check out my lifetime membership. So I have been working very, very hard to write these lesson plans for you guys, okay? If you want to join my lifetime membership, okay, I have extra lessons that I've written for owls and bats. And so every single thematic unit that I've ever taught is in my lifetime membership, okay? And this is how I have it organized. So here's Reader's Workshop, week one. Um, and so here's lesson one. You're gonna use this book. You're gonna use this anchor chart. You're gonna use interactive notebook. Here's lesson two. Here's lesson three, lesson four, lesson five, okay? So Marilyn, you said, how long does each lesson take? So that's a great question, and I'm so glad that you asked that. I was just about to answer that. So I know some teachers take um, one day to do these lessons. Some teachers take two days to do these lessons. Some take three days, okay? Now, it also depends on your class, okay? It depends on how fast they work and how fast they complete the assignment, okay? My kids, I teach them to get started quickly and not waste any time, so I can do one a day. However, it didn't start out that way at the beginning of the year, okay? The beginning of the year, I had to take two days to do one lesson, okay? I had to split it up into two different parts. So you could do a read aloud the first day, the anchor chart one day, the second day, do the interactive notebook, okay? You can split it apart. I didn't do days on here. You, if you see, I put lesson, lesson, lesson. I didn't do days, I did lessons. So you might take two or three days to do one lesson, okay? So that's Reader's Workshop. Then week two is all about bats, okay? So again, lesson six, lesson seven, lesson eight, lesson nine, lesson 10. This is all for reading, okay? We're doing story elements, we're doing author's purpose, and then on, on Friday, here's the focus poem, okay? Same thing for science. Here's the one for science. Lesson number one, you're reading the book, you're showing them the cards, you're doing the anchor chart. Lesson number two, lesson number three, lesson number four, lesson number five is also on Fridays. I do Fahrenheit Friday where I do a, a science investigation, okay, every Friday. Here is the second week for bats, okay. Lesson six, lesson seven, lesson eight, lesson nine, lesson ten is Fahrenheit Friday. Um, and so you can do these in any order that you want to. You don't have to do them in my exact order, okay. So. 
If you haven't heard, I have a lifetime membership. So inside my lifetime membership, you have access to all of my TPT resources in my whole TPT store for a lifetime. Okay, I have 400 plus resources. You can have um, access to all of my webinars, access to all of my uh, courses that I've ever made, my YouTube videos, and um, coaching calls from me also, okay? So here is what the cost is. And I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be uh, like beating around the bush with you. I'm gonna be frank with you, okay? I'm gonna be honest with you. So level one is 15 a month. And I know some teachers that are on here today are already in my lifetime membership. So if you guys wanna like give some feedback about it, that would be so helpful for me, okay? So you have unlimited access to 400 resources in my TPT store, okay? Webinars every month, and I add a new webinar every single month, the one that I'm giving right now, I'm gonna be uploading it into my lifetime membership, okay? All my YouTube channel uh, videos are in there. All of my lesson plans are in there for each single week of the whole year, okay? All the thematic units I'm making right now, I'm working really hard to make the thematic units all in together so they're all together for you so you have all of the resources together in one bundle. So I'm working very hard to do that. And then my podcast is also in there, teaching cross-curricular as well, okay? Level two is $20 a month. So again, you get the same thing level one has, plus you get my two courses that I've written to teach you how to launch Writer's Workshop and to teach you how to launch Math Workshop from day one, okay? The transformation that Writer's Workshop gives your kids is phenomenal. The, the course that I have for math workshop is phenomenal. It goes step by step by step, how to introduce your stations and how to do differentiation, how to add math literature, all those things that I taught you earlier about doing math literature every day is also, also in that course also. And then one-to-one -one coaching calls as needed. And then of course my podcast. So my, um, my lifetime membership has 400 plus resources. These are all of the resources that I have for you for a lifetime. Anything I add each month, I always add to my lifetime membership every single month, okay? So I have 58 back to school resources, a year long poetry bundle, 23 math workshop resources, 117 linking literature resources, which are my story companions, 47 science investigations, five author studies, including Kevin Hanks, Laura Numeroff, Patricia Polacco, Jan Brett, Tommy DePaula, 20 Writer's Workshop resources, 19 Reader's Workshop Reader's Theater scripts, All About Me thematic unit, Apple's thematic unit, Community Helpers, Pumpkins, Owls, Bats, Scarecrows, Native Americans, Christmas Around the World, Penguins, Arctic Animals, Weather, Objects in the Sky, President, American Symbols, Texas, Rainforest, Insects, Plants, Life Cycles, Rocks and Fossils, Ocean and Sea Life, and then 13 farmhouse decor resources, okay? Here are my webinars that I have, that I've ever made, are on inside of the Lifetime Membership. Writer's Workshop, Reader's Workshop, Math Workshop, Literacy Centers, How to Teach Cross-Curricular, Creative Fun, Cross-Curricular for Back to School, September, October, all the way to May, Fairy Tale Writing, Procedural Writing, Nonfiction Writing, Literature Circles, Behavior Management, Focus Poetry, Guided Reading, and Fahrenheit Friday. Whew, that's a lot. Okay, these are my two courses that I have made before that um, I'm gonna be launching my Scribbles to Stories, how to launch Writer's Workshop in a couple of weeks here. But this is also a course that's also in my lifetime membership. If you purchase level two, you already get both of these already in there, okay? They are each six CPA, CPE hours, each, so if you complete the course, you get six CPE hours from me, okay? Math Workshop is called Math Workshop Magic, Empowering K2 Mathematicians. So the total value of all of that is $500, but you get the membership at $200, which is more than half off. That is a great deal. So level one is 15 a month, level two is 20 a month. After 14 days, if you are not satisfied, you're gonna get your money back, I promise, okay? no strings attached, you can have your money back. It is not a problem. I, that is my, my oath to you, okay? So here's some teacher testimonials. I know some of these ladies are on here today. 
So Dawn says, I have used many of your resources and the kids are very engaged. My favorites are the writing activities and the book activities. They're easy to prep and teach. And then Terry, I think Terry's on here today. Um, I love all your resources and trainings. I'm so excited to use many of your ideas and resources in my first grade class. I've learned so much from you. Thank you, Kara. And then Paula, I think Paula's on here today too. Kara has written a blueprint that is effective and efficient. She shows you step-by-step -step how to set up a, and run writer's workshop. She makes it look so easy because all the hard work is already done. I'm a veteran teacher who is extremely excited to use this program in the fall. This is money well spent. I loved all the videos. My notebook is full and I have referred back to it frequently. I have started the writer's workshop and the kids are doing well. It is very well done and easy to implement. So thank you ladies for those the comments. Those are very sweet. Okay, so if you want CPE hours for today, um, it's gonna be a two hour, two hour workshop. So you can have two hours of credit. So message me after the webinar is over. And then um, I have other webinars that are in my, my TPT store that are free. You guys can download them whenever you want to. You can look at them whenever you want. These are also clickable, have clickable links to them. So here's Writer's Workshop, Reader's Workshop, Focus Poetry, okay? Go into my TBT store under the custom categories and it says free webinars, okay? Okay, guys, I'm going to use, um, I'm gonna use, I'm, I'm, I can't think anymore. I'm gonna pick another winner, okay? So um, let's see who else has been commenting. Elizabeth Menino Cleland. Elizabeth Menino. Congratulations, Elizabeth. You're my third winter winner today. Elizabeth Menino. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So my three winners today were Marilyn and Michelle and Elizabeth. So you guys can pick out which resource that you would like. Okay, you have Charlotte's Web to choose from. You have Let's Write About Halloween, uh, Craftivities. You have Birds of a Feather, Owl Unit, and then you have um, From Seed to Pumpkin. Okay, Pumpkin Unit. <laughs> okay, so I had some ladies that submitted some questions, and I haven't forgotten about you guys because I'm going to be having a raffle in a couple of minutes to see who gets to win a $30 gift card okay and you can choose either tbt or amazon okay what a great deal oh my gosh okay so esther i know esther's here today so esther's question i loved esther's question okay she says how do you do fun activities that aren't holiday related i love holidays but this year i can't do anything holiday related okay i can relate to this because i've had a couple of students who couldn't celebrate holidays either and unfor unfortunately, I could still decorate my classroom. They allowed me to do that, which was good. But that student could not participate in our holiday crafts, okay? But you can work around that with the seasons that is easier for them. So for example, if you wanna do for October, pumpkins, bats, owls, and spiders are fine, okay? As long as you're not doing Halloween, Okay, but you can still have them research pumpkins, bats, and owls and spiders. That is perfectly fine. And then for November, you can have them take part with turkeys, autumn, scarecrows, or Native Americans. And then for December, you can have them talk about reindeer. Okay, um, I know some teachers in the past have done Elf on the Shelf for December. Um, if you cannot do Elf on the Shelf, you can do a reindeer on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> and have that have that child write about the reindeer that's on your shelf, okay? So just FYI. And then for January, you could have them do something with winter, snowman, Arctic animals. Or February, you can have them do presidents, American symbols, Groundhog Day. Hundredth um, Day is also fine. And then for March, you can have them do spring, rainbows, Texas, if you are in Texas or whatever state you're in. And then April, you can have them do rainforest, plants, insects, and then May, um, rocks, oceans, and fairy tales. So as long as you're not participating, having them participate in the holiday part, you know, no Valentine's Day, um, no St. Patrick's Day, no Halloween, no Christmas. And then a lot of my kids' parents, they just stay home that day that we're doing um, that activity, okay? They just stay home. So what... 
it's up to you, whatever you want to do, but those are just some ideas. So that was a great question. Thank you, Esther. Okay, and Lisa, I think Lisa's here today. And Lisa says, I'm curious, what is your favorite October activity? You're always asking us. So now she's asking me. This is a great question, Lisa. Okay, I I had such a hard time with this because, you know, I love October and this is my favorite month. And so I, these are just some of them. I love all of them, <laughs> but I love the owl thematic unit. My, my heart really gets excited when I talk about owls for some reason. I don't know why, but I love owls. Um, I love my theme center for owls. It really, you know, melts my heart. And the kids just love talking about owls for some reason. They're, it's just a really intriguing topic. So they love it. And then, of course, Room on the Broom. I love that book. It's one of my favorite Halloween books. I love Room on the Broom. And I love watching the movie <laughs> with, my, with my class. I love Spookly. I love doing activities with Spookily. That's super fun. And then I love doing the pumpkin patch um, with my kids. So I, I love seeing their decorated pumpkins that they bring in. I love seeing their uh, costumes that they dress up as. So that was a great question, Lisa. So thank you for submitting that one. And then Marcy um, has a question about AI, artificial intelligence. And so she says, what do you know about chat GPT or AI for the classroom? It seems like that topic is everywhere. And yes, it is, it is, okay? I've taken a lot of classes recently that have lots of AI integration. And so this is what I've learned so far. And it it's not very much. So if you guys have another idea um, for AI, please share for Marcy, okay? So chat GPT, if you go to chat GPT, you can type in anything you want to know about. I'm talking about anything okay you can use chat gpt to help you write your lesson plans guys <laughs> so i was experimenting the other day and i i typed in um a first grade lesson plan with owls and bats and force in motion and the stuff that it brought up for that was incredible oh my gosh i got some new ideas and i hadn't even heard of before so use it for writing lesson plans to get some higher level thinking going on and like some great questions. Use ChatGPT. You can also use it for writing your t-test goals. If you're a, t a Texas teacher and you gotta you have to write a t-test goal, put it in there. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. And then I don't know if you know this, but Canva. I love Canva. That's my new favorite play toy. I love Canva so much. And you can use AI in Canva. So if you go to the apps on the side of Canva, it has apps, go to text to image. And you can type in anything you want for Canva to pull up for you for images. And you can use any of these images without having to have uh, permission from parents because these are all artificially made. And so I use these kids a lot. Like I use Canva to make my my banners for my TPT store, my banners for my webinars and my videos. I use this. I use this all the time. So you can type in anything you want to. I just typed in like kids in a pumpkin patch and it brought up these these kids. OK, and so they're not real, but you can still use them. I mean, it's just it's amazing. So Canva has a great option for you to use AI as well. So I'm not sure if you guys knew about that, but um, there are some ideas, okay? And then Christy, uh, I'm not sure if Christy is here, but Christy, if you're here, you had a question and you said, what low prep centers can I have my kinders do that reinforce skills that we are learning that are fun and engaging? That's a great question, Christy. And so um, I have a new resource in my TPT store and it's about sound mapping. So if you guys are learning about CVC words and you want to do sound mapping and have the kids practice that in their station, um, in their center for phonics, have a phonics station, okay? Then you can have them tap it. You can have the picture. You can have them tap the sounds. They're building the sounds with their magnetic letters. They're drawing it and then they're writing it, okay? So this mat right here I have for three sounds and I have for four sounds. So in my store, you can click on this picture. It'll take you to the image, to the resource. And again, I'm just gonna tell you, like I love anything that's interactive. So all of my theme centers, whatever science topic that you're doing, if you wanna make a theme center, 
do it, okay? Put puzzles, put books, put toys, um, put posters, anything that's interactive for your kinders for that science or social studies unit, do it, okay? Have them build something. Put Play-Doh, they can build with Play-Doh, they can build with Legos, I mean, whatever. Puppets are awesome. The kids love making stories with puppets, okay? That's that's such so fun for them. And then for math, I, I have my math stations. That's a whole other workshop, a whole other thing to talk about. But just know that I have differentiated activities for my math stations. And so the kids, I have lots of, of the holiday erasers in the math tubs. I teach it at my teacher table and then I put it in my math tub, okay? So I have activities for every month and holiday for math, every skill for math. Um, I just try to make it with fun, engaging, holiday related if I can, which is really fun for them. Anything that they can count, they can manipulate, they can move with their hands. The, the littles, they still need to manipulate with counters, okay? Not all of them can do mental math. Not all of them can punch and count on. Not all of them can use 10, uh, 10 frames or whatever you want them to do with their fingers. They have to have manipulatives. So anything you can have them count, sort, graph, um, you know, anything like that is, is great, okay? And then, of course, my library center, I have um, reading buddies. If you guys have reading buddies, they love, 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 love reading books with their reading buddies. I have all these little stuffed animals they can use, and they're so fun. They love it. So, Christy, thank you so much for this question. Um, anything like that you can use for your kinders, but make sure that your centers are purposeful. They have to have something related to what you're teaching, okay? And always try to teach it first before you put it in the station, okay? Just what I've learned for myself, okay? All right, guys, I'm gonna have my raffle. Are you ready? Okay, I'm gonna draw two names. So my first name is Esther Pig. Yay, Esther! You get a $30 TPT or Amazon gift card. And then my next name is Lisa Stevenson Shoe. Yay, Lisa! So you guys um, can Decide if you want $30 TBT or $30 Amazon gift card. Yay! Okay, so again, to recap, my, my winners today, my three winners were Marilyn Ellis, Michelle Pena Handler, and then Elizabeth Menino Cleland. You guys can pick those one of those four resources I shared with you at the beginning. And then Lisa and Esther are my TPT gift card or Amazon gift card winners. And so thank you guys so much for joining me today. I am so excited that I'm here with you and get to share my expertise with you and get to spend time with you today. Thank you for taking your time out of your Sunday to be with me. So please invite your teacher friends into our Facebook group. If you have some colleagues that are interested, I would love to have them join. And then I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a great week and enjoy your kids. And then until next time, let's take your classroom to the next level. Okay, I love you guys. Bye-bye.